Okay, let's uh, prove Euler's theorem. So just a quick repeat. <clears throat> if Zn are the integers mod n, Zn star are those elements of Zn that are relatively prime to n. So that phi of n uh, is simply equal to the size of Zn star. Phi of n is the number of elements that are relatively prime to n, number of elements in the, in, in the remainder interval. And Euler's theorem simply says that if you take a number k and raise it to the power phi of n, it equals 1, at least for those k in Zn star, and only for those k, actually, but we won't worry about that for now. Assume that k is in, is in Zn star relatively prime to n. So the first remark is that Zn star is closed under multiplication. So that is to say, if i and j are in Zn, then so is their product. As a matter of fact, if i and j and Z are in Zn, uh, i and j are in Zn star, if and only if their product is in Zn star. And you can prove this a lot of different ways. Um, you could prove this by observing that um, if i cancels and j cancels, then i times j cancels, because you can multiply i. Of course, first you can cancel the i in i times j, and then you can cancel the j. Likewise, uh, both have inverses. If i has an inverse and j has an inverse, then the inverse of i, j is multiplied by i inverse, multiplied by j inverse, which is equivalent to a way to cancel. I'm not proving the direction from right to left, but it goes as well. Uh, and finally, they have the same prime factors. Uh, that is, we know from the prime factorization theorem that um, uh, if i and j are two numbers, then i times j have exactly the prime factors that appear in i and j. So if i and j have no factors in common with n, which is what it means to say that they're in Zn star, then their product, their real product, i times j in the integers, has no prime factors in common with n, which means that um, the remainder of their product, i times j, also has no common factors uh, with n, and therefore i times j is in Zn star. So lots of different ways to verify this very straightforward fact that Zn star is closed under multiplication. Uh, it's worth a quick remark, by the way, that um, Zn star is not closed under addition, of course, because you can always take an element in Zn star and its uh, additive inverse, minus that number, uh, and both of which will be in Z star, and then add them and you get zero, which is by no means in Z star. Okay, so let's proceed with the proof of Euler's theorem. And... Uh, suppose that we wrote out all the elements in Zn star, call them k1, k2, up through k phi of n in any order. So that's what Zn star is. Now suppose that I take each of those elements and multiply them by the same element k. So I've multiplied each element uh, in Zn star by k, so I wind up with k times k1, k times k2, k times phi of n, where k itself is in Zn star, then I claim that uh, the two sets are equal, that Zn star, which is k1 through k phi of n, if you multiply um, each of those elements by the same element in Zn star, all you do is get the same elements in a different order. You permute the elements of Zn star. Well, uh, the reason is easy to see, actually, because Notice that when you multiply the elements k1 through kn through k phi of n by k, the, result, the resulting elements have to be all different because you could cancel k. So if two of them were equal, cancel k and they would be equal. But if you apply k to different elements here, you wind up with different elements there. So these two sets are the same size. But also, every element in the bottom set is in Zn star because Zn star is closed under multiplication. Each of the elements is k times ki, which is in z star. So what we have is a set that's the same size as z star and consisting only of elements in z star. It's got an equal z star. End of proof. So now let's just look at an example of watching this happen. Suppose I look at z9 uh, and I claim that these are the six 
uh, integers that are relatively prime to 9 in the interval from 0 to 8, inclusive. And of course, we could double check that we got them all by noting that phi of 9 is 3 squared minus 3, which is 6. So that's got to be all of them. And now let's pick one and multiply through and watch what happens. So if I multiply by 2, I get 2 times 1 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 5 is 1 in Z9, 2 times 7 is 5 in Z9, 2 times 8 is 7 in Z9, and there it is. This row is the same as the top row, except that they're in a different order. Well, let's do one more example to make to really hammer the point home. If I multiply by 7, 7 times 1 is 7, 7 times 2 is 5, 4 times 7 is 1 mod 9, because um, 3 times 9 is 27, leaves a remainder of 1. 5 times 7 is 35, remainder 8, 7 times 7, 49, remainder 4, 7 times 8, 56, remainder 2. And again, it's the same six numbers just permuted. Okay, so that means if I take the elements in Zn star and I multiply them together, k times k2 up through k phi of n, well, it's the same set as taking the, the each of those elements multiplied by k. So if I multiply each of those elements multiplied by k, it's the same product. Just the elements in, in Zn star are listed in a different order. So these two products are equal because the underlying sets are equal. Uh, well... If I factor out of out the k's here, what I wind up with is k to the phi of n times the product of k1 through k phi of n. But look at this. Here's k1 through k phi of n. There's k1 through k phi of n. And of course, they're, uh, the, they're all in Zn star. They're all relatively prime to n. So their product is relatively prime to n by closure of Zn star, that means that they're cancelable, cancelable, because they're both, because they, this product is in Zn star. So let's cancel them. I've got this product is equal to k to the phi of n times the very same product. So I can cancel it on both sides. And the first term becomes 1, and the second becomes k to the phi of n. And look at that. I have proved Euler's theorem. That was not bad.